14, Mark chapter 14. I'm using my brother Bob. You were with me when we went to, uh, what's that little town down there, uh, Brother Eccles? You, used to, you preached down there a couple of times, north of I-10, east. Wilcox. Not Wilcox, the other one. The other one, uh, uh, Benson. not Benson, no. What's oh, that? No, 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 no. North of I-10. You got to go north on I-10. Stafford. Stafford, that's it. Yeah, Stafford. That's where I got this Bible. Uh -oh. That's what I want to say. Bob, you were with me that night. So, I, I, folks, I have this. I have to tell you. I have this... Uh, this wonderful Bible that my wife gave me in 1974. Okay, uh, it's seen better days. <clears throat> okay, so I'm kind of gonna do some preaching off, this. and it's the same Bible, exact same Bible. That's why I like you know you know where you look for verses and they're on a certain page and a certain spot. So that's why I had to get a replacement for that one. So I know exactly where I'm at. <clears throat> yeah. Mark chapter 14, I want to preach about a lady, uh, a wonderful lady uh, that is in all four Gospels. The thing about it is, <clears throat> here's what I want to say. We're not sure who this lady is. <clears throat> this lady, this is what we call sanctified extravagance. <clears throat> oh, let's... Let's take a look at this Mother's Day little. Let's do that. It's only 42 seconds. Can you play that? <clears throat> He's going to play this. And, and I just want to thank the Lord for all the mothers. And I thank the Lord for my mom. My mom got saved later in life. She spent 10 years, her last 10 years, loving the Lord Jesus. And this reminds me of her so much. Got it? <laughs> God's people said, hey man, just a little uh, thank you to all the mothers. <clears throat> what a blessing. And I do want to thank the Lord for, for Brother Hughes, did a great job. Brother Matt as well, Edie, uh, what a blessing you all are to us. <clears throat> In Mark chapter 14, Mark 14, it says, beginning at verse 1, And after two days was the feast of Passover and of unleavened bread. <clears throat> and the chief priests, and this kind of is feeding back, I don't know. Is that better? Okay. Yeah. Um, chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said... <clears throat> not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box. You notice that the name isn't there. <clears throat> having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence, a year's wages, and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. Well, you might think, well, Jesus, you know, he, you know, he might say, well, yeah, you're right. You know, she's wasting. No, she said, he, what did he say? Verse 6, everyone. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. God's people said, Amen. 
for you have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. Everyone, verse 8, here's the title of our message, everyone. She hath done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body to the burying. Everyone, verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Praise the Lord. She hath done what she could. Now, there are many famous women and mothers in the Bible, in the scripture. Uh, of course, Eve is the mother of all living, right? <clears throat> and, of course, we have Sarah, we have Hannah, we have Athaliah. Say, well, why is Athaliah? Well, over in Second Chronicles, uh, in Second Chronicles twenty twenty two verse three, Ahaziah, the Bible says, and oftentimes uh, when they introduced the kings, they would talk about the mother, right? <clears throat> they say, and his mother. Of course, they would talk about the father too, but the mother and Athaliah, the Bible says. Uh, was his counselor to do wickedly, okay, Ahaziah. And the Bible says that the destruction of Ahaziah was on this wise, and the problem was with that mother is that she was his counselor to do wickedly. Uh, what's the message there? The message is we can be uh, a good influence or a bad influence, right? Our lives. I ask you today, is your life drawing people to Christ or pushing them away? <clears throat> hmm? Is your life a good and godly influence or is your life a negative influence? We wonder where our nation is, why we're here. Because I'm going to tell you why we're here, where we are, in such a uh, pathetic place that our nation is in. Now, don't get me wrong, I love America. Just like I would love a wayward child, right? Okay. Um, but I'm going to tell you something. These little choices that we've made along the way, right? Some of them not so little, right? Taking prayer out of public schools. Why would you want to take prayer out? Okay. Now we're at the point we're just trying to get prayer back in the church, right? The answer is not in the White House or the Black House or whatever you want to call it. The answer is in the church house and in your house and my house. Well, this precious lady, and the more I studied this, the harder it became to kind of identify who this was. Now, over in uh, 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 chapter 12 of John, over in chapter 12 of John, it says that Jesus six days... 12 and verse 1, or you can just listen. Before the Passover came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. And they made him a supper. Jesus liked to have a supper, amen? He liked to eat and have fellowship with his disciples. They made him a supper, and Martha served, of course. And But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. He just got rose from the dead, Amen. John 12, okay? I told you, you can just follow along or, yeah, head on over there if you want. John 12, okay? And the Bible says, verse 3 of John 12, you want to go there? What does it say in verse 3? If you're there, then Mary, then took Mary a pound of ointment of spite. Now the, the question comes, was well, this Mary of Bethany? Mary of Magdalene. There's a number of Marys, right? Mary, the mother of Jesus, right? Well, we believe this is Mary of Bethany, of course, and very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus. So uh, in, in, in Matthew and Mark, it says that, that this woman poured the ointment on his head, right? But then we get over here, I think in Luke and John, she also put it on his feet. I think this, okay? 
It could be a couple of things. There might be several anointings, right? Might be several anointings. Or I think personally that she poured it on his head and it poured down to his feet. And the Bible says she wiped her his feet with her hair. Amen. And there is a message there that the hair is a glory to the woman, right? And so she literally put her glory upon his feet. Amen? Now, several weeks ago, we preached on the wounds of Christ. Do you remember that? I hope you never forget it. The wounds of Christ. Where was Christ wounded? His head. For our what? For our head sins. Got it? He was wounded in his head for our head sins. Our mind, our emotions, our will, our eyes, our ears. Powerful stuff. Well, I saw a parallel, Brother Matt, as I studied this. What Mary, I think it was Mary of Bethany, that's my, well, but then it said it was a sinful woman, so that might have been Mary Magdalene. See, so there's a little bit, of that, and so there might be more than one anointing, all right? We know that the Bible does not contain mistakes, amen? <clears throat> okay, all right. There might be things that we don't understand. What are you looking for? A fan? No fan. There's no fan. Okay, you can take that. It's a little filter. All right. All right, you can take it. It's yours. <laughs> Here's what I want to say is, so <clears throat> we see here in, in, in John 12 that she uh, anointed the feet of Jesus in John 12. Now we go back to Matt Mark. We're going to go back and forth a little bit now. Apologize. But the Bible says here that she break the box right the alabaster box break the box poured it on his head you see i think god is perfectly accurate amen she loved and worshiped our lord jesus from head to what to amen god's people said amen and so Many times in the gospel, it's called the synoptic gospels in John, many times uh, uh, we have to piece together uh, an aspect from Matthew or Mark, and then we have Luke, the beloved physician, right? And we have John to the world and so forth. And so we have different uh, aspects of possibly the same anointing. And I think that she loved the Lord Jesus Christ so much. She, and, and let me, as we get to John chapter 12, and we consider that this is Mary, uh, Mary of Bethany, right? What happened in chapter 11? Anybody? No? Are you with me? Did I lose you yet? What happened in chapter 11? Lazarus was what? Dead. Okay. And the Lord Jesus Christ tarried. He didn't come right away, did he? And so when he finally got there, he said, hey, Lord Jesus, you're late. Where you been? He's dead. He stinks. Four days. That's right. Our Lord Jesus, he knew exactly what he was doing. Lazarus. Come forth. <clears throat> and he came forth. Let me tell you what I think is going on in chapter 12. As we get to chapter 12, I think they were having a victory dinner. Amen. <laughs> a fellowship dinner. Lazarus is alive. Let's have a dinner. Let's have some fellowship. And I believe that Mary was so overwhelmed with the raising of her brother, Lazarus, 
those four days were four days of hell for her because she loved Lazarus so much. And Jesus loved Lazarus. And when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Lazarus, what was that like? Where were you for those four days? Were you talking to Jesus? Were you in heaven? Were you talking to the Father up there? And the Father said, oh, time for you to go back. <laughs> Boy, I don't know. This Once again, you know, Brother Frank, this is like above my mental pay grade, right? But I look forward to fellowship. With, they're going to have a Lazarus corner up there. Amen. And at that point, Jesus rose him from the dead. He stinketh. And here's what I believe, beloved. They're having this meal. And, and I believe that Mary, I don't know if it was spontaneous or it was a spontaneous sacrifice or Mary said, I'm going to plan this. I have, I have this box over here. Here, here's a good kind of picture of a box, you know. I have this box over here. And in that is the most costly spikenard in the world. She broke that box. She went, when they were all sat together, then Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And of course, Judas, the devil, right? Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was this ointment not sold for 300 pence given to the poor? Oh, he's so spiritual, right? Yeah, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief <laughs> and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Yeah, I could get 300 pence from that. Let her alone, he said. This against the day of my burying hath she kept this. That's verse 7. That's right, leave her alone. Amen. Somebody's doing the work for God, leave him alone. Okay, And so, these were difficult days for the Savior. They were plotting to put him to death, right? And there was this meal in the house. Now, here it says it was Simon the leper, okay? Uh, and it is in Bethany. So, they're all kind of neighbors there, right? Now, I've been to Bethany, and it's a small little, you know, it's like Bethlehem, all right? Everybody, you know, you ever, how many ever been in one of these little towns where everybody knows everybody? Huh? Yeah. We have a little town, Knights Ferry. That's where our family finally settled after many years, after living in Berkeley all those years. And Dad said, you know what, we're going to retire up this little town. Population, 93. Okay. So everybody knew, knew everybody else and what everybody else was doing. <laughs> Lots of gossip rolling around that town. Little, little uh, co country church. I preached in that church. And uh, God's doing the work there, though. Praise the Lord. So that's Bethany. All right. Dr. Sanders and I and our group, we... Uh, we... Uh, Met with a godly lady, had a wonderful time, and uh, then we walked across the street to Lazarus's tomb. What a privilege it was to be there, to think about what happened there. Our Lord Jesus Christ raising him from the dead. I think she was also overcome with, with gratitude and joy in her heart that her brother was raised from the dead. She said, I can do nothing but... But, 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 but anoint you and praise you from head to foot and lay my hair at your feet. So, out of all of these, 
ladies and mothers, Jezebel, and we got Mary, of course, Eunice and Lois, we just read about this morning. Next. This lady, she did what she could with what she had. She had this, this box with the ointment. And folks, I, I don't know what the future holds. I'm going to call, I'm, I'm going to, the, the, the time may be coming where I have to scramble and get every available dollar we can <clears throat> for a more permanent home. So think about that, pray about it. God's going to open a door. God will open a door. And we're all going to sacrifice, amen? We're going to make it happen. I'm not, look, I'm not worried about it. I'm not pressuring. I'm not going to pressure anybody. Because God has always led us. So, Bob, what are we doing? We're thanking the Lord ahead of time. Let me tell you something. Mary of Bethany was thanking Jesus for all that he did for her and sacrificed. This is called uh, sanctified extravagance. You want to put that up there? Uh, Vance Havner. How many ever heard of Vance Havner? Good old time preacher. He's gone. He's with the Lord. The old Southern Baptist, not this new stuff. And so here's Vance Havner. He's going to talk a little bit about this sacrifice. You got it? Oh, maybe it isn't going to work. And if it doesn't, that's okay. Did you hook up? Are you hooked up? Well, just, just okay, put it aside for now. Let me know when you get hooked up, okay? All right? <clears throat> So she did what she did what she could with what she had. You know, some think about what they would do. You know, over these many years, and brother Matt, I'm sure that you've had this conversation with some well-meaning member, right? And they come up to you and they say this, and I always have to chuckle. And it, the conversation goes like this: Pastor, I just want you to know. That if I win the lottery, <coughs> I'll read from another of the Gospels. I'll, oh, here he is. Because the, Go. They're spread through the minnow, and this is John 12, the first nine verses. John 12. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, yeah, where Lazarus was, which move, had move been dead, whom he raised from the dead. That valid, as Dr. Lee used to say. They didn't like. That's it. Go. Good. Now the fragrance of that ointment soon evaporated. But the aroma of that ointment has lasted also for 2,000 years. Amen. Talk about medals and citations and promotion. This perfume made this woman a celebrity forever. I like to call it sanctified extravagance. And that's my subject. God loves it. My heavenly Father is not stingy. He giveth liberally and upbraideth not. Amen. He wastes millions of blossoms every spring and billions of snowflakes every winter, splashes color all over the landscape recklessly in autumn. He could do it with less, doesn't dole it out for afraid he'll run out of it, doesn't measure his love, he gave his only son, he spared not his son, but freely delivered him up for us all. He giveth not the spirit my measure, his love has no limit, his grace has no measure, Amen. his uh, power no boundary known unto men, yes. but out of his infinite riches in Jesus he giveth, giveth and giveth and giveth and giveth again. Amen. That's my God. And if you're miserly and penurious and parsimonious, you didn't get it from God. My God's a generous God. He's got plenty of resources. Heaven's in no danger of going broke. Some of the saints act like it sometimes. But it's in pretty good shape, solvent, always will be. I heard of a little church that's called a new preacher. And somebody asked a member, how do you like a new preacher? Man, they said he's a praying man. He's been asking for things our other preacher didn't even know God had. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right. Vance Havner. There's only one of him, too. 
How many never heard of him? Never heard of Vance Habner? Never have? He great. Great old preacher. He's with the Lord many years now, a number of years. And uh, did you ever get to hear him? No, never got to hear him. So I've had these people come to me from time to time. Say, well, Pastor, if I win the lottery, you know, I'm going to, just want you to know, I'm going to remember the church. And I always tell them this. Well, that's wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm thankful. First of all, what are you doing playing the lottery for? What are you wasting your money on that? Amen. My question is always the same to these people, and that is this. What are you doing with what God has given you now? Amen. Are you tithing or giving proportionately what you have now? That's the question. Well, Bob, Bob Jones Sr., many years ago, he had these little sayings. And one of them is three words, do it now. If you have it now, give it now. I, I remember a lady who came to a preacher back in the 20s and uh, they were trying to build a building and, 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 and expand their mission outreach. And, and he was making an appeal. And uh, she, uh, you know, she was a very wealthy woman. And uh, she said, I'm going to pray. I, I, you know, I feel this compunction to, to give you a generous gift. And, and so she did. And uh, she said, I've been holding back on God. Well, she gave it, and it was used of the church, and within a matter of days, the crash came where the, all of the money was worthless. She says, I'm so glad I gave it when money was worth something. Now, our money, in case you didn't know it, is getting worth less and less. The dollar is on a crash and a demise right now. Now is the time. To honor the Lord. I'm not trying to fundraise here. I'm just telling you. This lady gave the best that she had. Amen. She broke that box and spilled it. I like that. Sanctified extravagance. She gave her best. Bring up that other one. Okay. With Catherine Booth. And we're going to do that in just a moment. Next. If you can go next. And so that's the question. Go back. Once, what are we doing with 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 the time and the talent and the treasure and the truth that we have and the temple? Okay, are we good stewards of what we have now? Like the lad by the sea, a little boy once long ago, at even ere the sun sank low, freely offered his meager food, which thou didst take and bless and break, and with it feed a multitude. He just had a few loaves and a few fishes, but God used that in the hands of the Savior, right, to feed a multitude of thousands. Praise God. Well, Mary being dead yet speaketh, amen. Next. She did what she could while she could. Some are always going to do something sometime. How about it? <clears throat> the Bible says in Ephesians 5.16, redeeming the time for the days are evil. What would she do with it? Well, she did it. All right, and we're speaking about her now, aren't we? Some believe in yesterday. All right. Next. So do it now. Do it now. And then she did... She did what she could, though she was criticized. Amen? How do you do when you're criticized? Well, I'll tell you what, it's easy to say, well, you know what, I'm not even going to do that. I'm not even going to serve God anymore. I just get criticized for it. I'll tell you what, it's not easy serving Jesus. Pray for chance, Right? He came, he got, he, he got saved, he received Christ, he got baptized. Let me tell you something, the devil didn't like that. He didn't like that a bit. You pray for him up in Montana. 
Joe Lanius. Where Kelson's sitting. Joe did a great job. He's up in Montana. And they're both facing legal issues. We need to pray for them both. She did what she could regardless of the critics. There will always be complainers, fault finders, murmurers. Why was this waste made? Thank God for Vance Havner who reminds us that sometimes we just need to pour ourselves out the best that we can and give him the glory. So she did what she could, though she was criticized. I think about those wounds of Christ and how she loved him head to foot. She gave him the best that she had. I want you to hear something. and I, Boy, I tell you what, I was thrilled. I didn't realize there's actually a recording of William Booth. <laughs> Bell. <laughs> of the South... I'm talking about the old Salvation Army, not this new thing, this new, you know, so, social gospel. But I tell you what, you want to hear that? We'll hear that tonight. Would you like to hear William Booth tonight? All right, you come back tonight. William Booth. But this, we're going to hear, you got it? Okay. We are going to hear from his granddaughter. And as we go today, this is it. I'm done. She had done what she could. This is William Booth's granddaughter, and this is actually a recording of a recording. Okay, so uh, bear with it. You can hear it, but I want you to hear about giving your best for Jesus and what God can do with that. All right, here she is. This is Did my best. Oh, go ahead. Best. Wait. And yeah. then he suddenly Wait, seemed go to back. be yeah, you go back. Me roll. Back here. You got to get this. Okay, go. Start over. It's only a few minutes. A minute. I said, well, I, I did my best. And then he suddenly seemed to be angry with me. He roared at me. And he could. You know, he could shout. There were no such things as uh, these... Uh, I don't, where are they with the bar? <laughs> <laughs> no such thing as microphones. <laughs> And he had a splendid voice. And when he got onto the platform, you know, he held himself up and shouted. When he shouted at me that day, you see, I was all in a shiver. And he said, your best. What's the good of that, Catherine? You'll never be any good to me in the army if that's all you can do. <laughs> well, I feel dreadful. <laughs> and then he suddenly stopped and changed. Did you see, dear child, when we believe in God and God helps us, we can do better than our best. Man. And then he opened up all that idea of God being within reach and, and understanding how we felt. That's it. Did you get it? Did you get it? He wants us to give. Thinking about going solo. That's good. But uh, turn that off, yeah. You get that idea? We are to give our best, but when we give our best in the idea that it's in his hands, we can do better than our best. <clears throat> God's people said, Amen. And that's what God did. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ did with Mary of Bethany when she poured out the best that she had. <clears throat> and we're speaking of it today. In a few weeks, we're going to have Memorial Day, right? And this that we preach about today is spoken of for a memorial for her. Thank God for Mary of Bethany. Let's stand together. <clears throat> Sanctified extravagance.
Let's give thanks to him. We're going to hear from William Booth tonight. I didn't know. He passed, and I had to, Brother Matt, I had to look. When did he die? I thought he died in the 1800s. 1912 he passed. So we have a recording of D.L. Moody reading the Beatitudes. 1899. Yeah. Blessed are the poor in spirit. God. Yeah, that's right. He was given the Beatitudes. We're going to hear. Listen, this message from, and it's, it's short. It's only like four or five, five minutes maybe. He puts more in that message about reaching the lost for Christ. And, and I mean the least, the last, and the lost. That's who he went after in London. Incredible message. Let's pray. Let's bow our heads and our hearts. She, let's say it together. She hath done what she could. Come on, that was weak. Everybody. She had done what she could. Now I want you to personalize it. Have I done what I can for Jesus Christ? Have I done all that I can? You pray for us. We're here Sunday morning. We're here Sunday night. We're here Wednesday night. By the way, having a fabulous time. We're here Friday. We're here Saturday. As Randy likes to call it, soul searching. <laughs> it's soul winning. Thank God for Maria and Marina. And all of the others, hundreds of them, come to Christ. Say, well, where are they? You know what? We're doing what we can to follow up on them. We really are. You pray for them. Father in heaven, it's been wonderful to be in your house today. Thank you for the reminder of sanctified extravagance for our Lord Jesus Christ who gave his all on the cross. You poured it all out. Every drop of your precious, pleading, powerful, prophetic blood for us. How precious to us, Lord. What have we poured out for you? Lord, I had to examine myself this week as I prepared this message and thinking about Mary of Bethany. Oh, Lord Jesus, forgive us for holding back for not giving it our all. I wonder, as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, is there anybody here who would say, Lord Jesus, I'm not sure I'm saved. Pastor, I'm not sure I'm saved. I'm not sure I have assurance of salvation. Pray for me. Anyone like that? Brother Matt asked you to tell us when you were saved. Could you really give an honest answer when you were saved? Could you really? Are you sure? Dear Lynette, Eugene came forward last Lord's Day. I talked to her yesterday. I had hoped she would be here today. Pray for her. Maybe you're here and you say, well, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'm not, I'm not going to give the Lord Jesus my alabaster box. Now, when I speak about that, you know what I'm talking about. Maybe it's something in a safety deposit box. Maybe it's, look, look, you follow what the Holy Spirit speaks your heart about. We're going to need some sacrifice possibly in the coming days. And I'm going to tell you something. Carol and I, we're going to pour it out. Believe me. We're going to give whatever, whatever we can to make sure the ship of Temple Baptist Church keeps sailing on, rescuing souls out of the stormy sea of sin in this area. Will you join us? Be a part. Start building a future. I know Jesus could come any moment, but we need to labor like he's not coming for a long time. Give it all. Give it everything we got. 
Maybe the Holy Spirit spoke. I want you to come and pray. When we sing this invitation, you come and say, Lord, maybe we should sing I Surrender All, huh? Whatever. Father in heaven, speak to all of us in Jesus' name. Amen.